So this is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the former undefeated British Commonwealth and European Super Bantamweight champion, Jason Cunningham. Jason, how are you, mate? I'm good, thank you, mate. I'm very good. Uh, it's been a bit of a quiet time from out of the ring. Uh, I've been working quietly behind the scenes on a few bits in background and uh, I recently became a father again. So I've had other things in my per- Thank you. I've had other things in my personal life happening, but... Um, yeah, I think it's time uh, to get back to it. So, knuckle down for the beginning of next year. How many is that now? What's that, kids? Uh, two, but a very, very big gap. A 13 year old and a newborn. So, <laughs> kind of, it's kind of starting all over again, but it is what it is. So, yeah. Good stuff. And yeah, we last saw you out in July. Um, not yeah. something you're probably keen to revisit, but it was the last time you were in action. Against yeah. Zolani Tete, you, you dared to be great. Um, and. It didn't go your way, but no disgrace there. He's a what, two-weight world champion, very, very good fighter. Yeah. What, when you reflect on it now, I know you were pretty despondent at the time, but do you look at it now and see there's anything you could have done differently? Any, you know, Anything where you could have maybe not traded so early? What What do you think? Um, it's hard to say because the, the plan was to take him into later rounds anyway, but it didn't get that far. He just, honestly, like, it's hard to describe to people unless you step in there with a world class fighter, then you actually know you're in with world class, if you know what I mean. It was, um, I don't regret it, and I wanted to test myself, and that was all that left to go. Probably easier fights than Zani Tete, but the, opposite, uh, the opportunity presented itself, so uh, so I took it. I'm, obviously, I'm not one to shy away, but I just found out, and I knew from first bell, Danny, that uh, he was world class. Just everything his jab was, just, I didn't even see it coming half the time. He was, uh, he was just very, very good. So, no disgrace, he was a better man, and uh, that's all there is to it. It's interesting what you said there, because I was looking through the Super Bantamweight uh, list on BoxRec earlier, and some of the world champions would arguably have been uh, an easier challenge than Teta. Yeah. Yeah, probably. But like I say, the opportunity was there, and uh, it was just kind of everything to do with it as well, you know. Uh, he'd been inactive uh, a couple of years out, there were all people talking, he couldn't be on slide, this and that, and I mean, obviously, we don't know unless we're in there with him, but you never know, and you know, obviously, to say I've been in there with a fight like Zelani Tetti as well. Um, it is what it is, it didn't pay off, but you know, we'll come again. Do you regret at all giving up some of the belts because obviously they held you in a certain position, or, or did you have to give them up? Uh, n- no, not, not necessarily. Obviously, the British title I had to give up because obviously I had to develop my European, so I forced them to that. Um, then obviously, Zelani took me IBF International and the Commonwealth. Uh, the only one that was really disappointing, I found, was the European. Uh, mm. You know, so, so I beat uh, Yafai in his backyard. I then fought two mandatories and one, not voluntary defence, two mandatories. And then to be stripped because I've been by a, be, well, been beaten by a fighter like Zelani Tete uh, for him to, you know, strip me. And I found that out right after I'd been beat as well. So it was like a double ball, if you like. But listen, it is what it is. It's gone now and uh, we move forward to see where we go next. What was their official reason for stripping you? Did you have a mandatory due? Or? No, I don't, no, I don't think I really did. Oh, no, you just had two mandatory. Yeah, yeah, the Kubi was my mandatory. I think it was a manner of defeat, but, you know, like I say, I, I wasn't beat by a Mugwara, so I don't know. There's politics and all that in, involved with boxing and stuff, and I just kind of took it on my chin, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of it just it is what it is, Dan. We're talking of that European title. It's being disputed on Saturday night in Telford uh, between Baluta and... Yeah. And uh, Liam Davis, the British champion. So Liam Davis seems to be on a mission to pick up all your old belts. Um, yeah. What, what do you make of that fight? And to kind of rebuild, would you be interested in going back in for the European against the winner? Uh, what do I think of that fight? I think it's a brilliant fight. Um, obviously, yeah. I picked Leach when he, you know, yeah. when Davis fought him, mm-hmm. and obviously I got that one wrong. And I was quite impressed with with Davis. Um, I'm going to pick Davis to win. But I think it'll be a great fight because Baluta is, is an handful. He's just he's relentless. He's non-stop. He's an handful for anyone. So uh, that's who I'm picking there. And yes, obviously I'm interested. I always am interested. And for me now, I could probably afford about this. I could probably could hang it up if I wanted to and say, you know what, I've done this. I've done that. The only thing I've not achieved is a world title. But I'm enjoying my time with Frank and Queensbury, uh, and I just want to be involved now in the biggest fights possible, big domestic fights as well. So. That goes for them too, or any of the other super weights as well. I'm, I'm kind of open to any of them, so we'll just see. I think Balut has ranked quite highly, so if Davis beats him and then you were to beat Davis, you could be right in line for a potential world title shot. 
Yeah, like I said, it could all just come spinning back around again, couldn't it? Uh, but like I said, I'm not looking at that. I've just got to come back first, rebuild, get back, uh, you know, get back to winning ways. And if that's against one of them two, then you know, so be it. We'll see what happens. Like I say, I think we'll be talking with uh, with Frank and Queensbury soon and just see what my next move is. So, yeah, we'll wait to hear from them and go from there. And will that next move definitely be at Super Bantamweight or is there the potential to go up or down again? Because you, you've been up and down the weights before. Yeah, I've been up and down. I said I was staying at Super Bantamweight. I think that's my best weight, my most solid weight. Obviously, I come unstuck uh, with Tete, but before then, I've probably been on the best role in the career. So, uh, no, I plan on I plan on staying at Super Bantamweight. Um, you know, obviously, some Frank's got some good good featherweights, you know, some tasty clashes there, but um, I've had all my success at Super Bantamweight, so I'm going to keep to my word and stick there. Do you think one of the issues with the Tete fight was just how big the gap is between European level and world level at the lighter weights? I do, but at the same time, it's like I've been in with I've been in with class fighters. I've been in, with, you know, where even Kai Yaffa had super flyweight. He was a former world champion and stuff. So I've been there, Conlon, you Conlon, yeah, you name it. Really, really high level caliber kids. So uh, I just noticed the difference while I'm in there. Um, obviously, we were, were a puncher at the weight as well, which was nothing to add. So I just think I come against a you know a very very good fighter. You know, obviously in this area as well, and for our weight divisions, uh, we're just a class fighter, and that's all there was to it. Would you like him to go on and win a world title at Super Bantam now, just to, you know, it makes it look better on you, I suppose? Uh, yeah, either or. I, I believe he's, he's obviously quite capable of winning a world title again anyway. Uh, we, we spoke about this and you know, he probably would, and he's going to be an avoided man. Uh, I can't see many fighters wanting to take Tete, and especially how the Queens are his stable, because obviously he's, he's in and around it all now. Uh, I doubt any of us are going to want to take Tete. So, um, either or, obviously, I just wish him all the very best and uh, good luck to him. And you mentioned having the big domestic fights. Apart from the winner of uh, Bluter and Davis, who else could you see them being against? Uh, I don't know. Obviously, Queensbury's packed full of super bantamweights, isn't it? So it could be any of them. Couldn't it? If it makes sense, obviously, we talk with Frank and everyone in future as well. Uh, we'll just see what they've got to say. But if it makes sense, then, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm more than game. I mean, a Brad Foster rematch may make sense for both of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did mention that. It's gone, obviously, it's gone quiet with Foster, hasn't it? I've not really heard much on there on that front, so I'm not quite sure what's happening with Brad. But, uh, yeah, that's, again, that's another... Uh, that's another... Uh, somebody's trying to contact me. Can you still see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're very much in demand. Right, that's it. I'll wait till they clear off. Um, go on. Yeah, so, basically, uh, I'm open to, to any. And the Brad Foster definitely uh, interests me because, obviously, there's a rivalry there. Uh, sorry, I'm back now. Yeah, uh, there's a rivalry there. His history, uh, you know, I got a lot of hate from it as well. Wound a lot of his fans up in the process, so that's another big domestic clash. And then you got someone like Dennis McCann. I don't know if he's even on your radar, but he's kind of moving up in weight, or he has done. He's at Bantam at the moment, but he's he's very young still, and he's broadening out. That could be a very exciting clash in the future. Yeah, Joe you know, Dennis. Obviously, we've done a bit of work together before, and he's he's fighting for me Commonwealth title. Isn't he obviously Ted must have vacated that, and obviously in stable and what have you. And uh, Dennis is someone who I, I highly, I highly rate. Uh, obviously, I've worked with him. We've done work together. I've sparred with him down there. He's sparred up here. So he's one who is definitely to keep an eye on come through. And I actually get on with him and his family as well. So uh, whatever may come, yeah, regardless to any of them, um, we'll just see. See what's wrong, Connor. How good is Dennis based on the fact you've sparred him and you've fought some of the really elite fighters? Yeah, very, very good. Yeah, What you're going to take into consideration is I'm obviously, I'm a big physical man. You said he's growing, he's developing. But... Uh, considering his age and that and obviously he's got a lot of time on his side he's very very capable of getting very far in game what have you been doing while you're waiting for this next <laughs> fight I mean you're only out in July it's not like it was ages ago but what, what have you yeah. been doing with your time have you been in the gym regular have you been doing work on the side what have you been up to I'm in mean, gym now as you can probably hear in the background <laughs> I'm always in gym I'm always, I always keep it busy uh, we've had a new link up with amateurs set up in our gym so I've been helping hands on there with the kids Um other things in background that were setting up, uh, obviously a foundation, but I'm my own foundation running as well. So I've got quite a good team behind me working on different things. Obviously, like I said there, I'm a father again. Uh, maybe it's three week old, three and a half week old, sorry. So uh, I've got a lot of things going off. And not only that, my most latest bit of news, which is going to happen today, of all days, funny your, uh, your Zoom call me today, yes. is obviously I'm a manager now. I'm a, I'm a licensed boxing manager, so I'm making my first signing today as well. We have a good uh, former amateur from our amateur club. Uh, female fighter as well Ellie Hellowell so uh, she's one to keep an eye on and it's something for 
for me to venture into now as well, a new beginning, if you like. So yeah. uh, I'm quite excited. And um, yeah, it's just a new chapter for me. Tell us a little bit about the foundation. So what what is it going to do? What's it going to be called? Well, obviously, it's going to... It's, we are, we're all just in the process of getting it all going. Uh, name it back of it as we think of the underdog will never lost hope, because obviously that's what's on my chest. But it's just to do, obviously, with kids in a local area. I do a lot of work with kids and a lot of work. I've worked with... Uh, Jamie and Gary McDonald's Foundation working with kids. Um, I've got my own classes, mini eaters, which is five to ten year olds that's working with kids, but more fun. Obviously, they're quite young there, so the basics of boxing, but more fun. Uh, then, like I say, we've got everything that's going up in there, but yeah, it's all to do with giving back to the community. Uh, there's still a lot of things to put in place, but we've got the cogs turning, which is the main thing. Ah, oh, it's brilliant. That's good to hear. Do you think you're, the area you're in particularly needs that? Is it uh, compared to other places? Is it an area that needs kind of more stuff for kids? Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of crime. It's probably the same everywhere. There's good and bad all over the country, isn't there? Uh, there's no doubt about that. And boxing is one of the sports, you know, that tends to be for the deprived kids and in the, the rougher areas of the country, if you like. And um, yeah, obviously it gives opportunities. It's, uh, you know, all kids mixing. Well, one thing with boxing, you'll find you can have a police officer in there, but you can have a criminal in here and we're all working together. <laughs> Everyone's here to do the same thing. To, to obviously better their lives. They're working to, you know, to uh, make their lives more positive, if you like. So, yeah, I'm all for giving back and uh, this is part of doing it as well. You've got a police officer, criminal. Ray will beat all of them up. He doesn't care. Ray, Ray's in there now. He's, yeah, yeah. What he said to me is he's on about all this YouTube boxing going off. He's thinking of trying to get into that. So uh, it seems to be a market. It seems to be a market now, don't you, after the weekend? So, yeah. Well, he'd be like Britain's hardest trainer. That's what we need. You mean like yeah, him again? Sure. Like, <laughs> get him in with Shane McGuigan. He'd be up there, wouldn't he? Exactly. He's just my Good match all trainers up, definitely. He's got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been a contender. Brilliant. Jason, really, really good to catch up with you, mate. And um, yeah, let us know as soon as um, you've got quite a date in the books and we'll, we'll do yeah. this again. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, I'm hoping to find out very, very soon because I'm uh, actually like, starting to get itchy knuckles now. I've had my little rest. I've obviously I've had personal things going off in my life, but uh, we're ready to get going again. Great stuff. All right, well, I look forward yeah. to that, mate. And uh, yeah, take care. Brilliant. And you thank you, Danny.